up. Hold on. Wait, you're muted. Mute. Oh, now you're unmuted. Okay. Chat, Jacqueline's here. We'll see who else. Jacqueline. Hello. Up. Oh, wait, where is she? Where is she? Um, yeah, I'm going to leave it as um, everybody can be. Hey, what's up? I thought I was. Is that Joe? I don't think it's What's up? up? Hi. Oh, man. Um, we probably have about. Well, we can get started in a minute, even though there's probably about five or six other people, but I'm going to email this anyway. So, um, not a big deal. Um, cool. Um, so yeah, Johnny, I'll do a quick, quick little um, overview of who you are, what we're going to talk about. Um, I was just looking over your little recap notes, and then I'll let you come take the floor. So John, hey, you're not in your like basement dungeon, are no, you? I am. Oh. So Sarah is moving. She's going to have her own office. Oh, okay, and then, cool. The computer is pointed away from, from the all dungeon. that mess. It's it's that way. Okay. But I'm trying to be like a little more professional here and like okay. actually like not people nice. are like, wow, you're like prepping for nuclear war here. It's yeah, just yeah, the dungeon. A lot and it all ends up here. Okay. So, you know. Well, cool. All right, great. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're gonna talk about uh, some bike fitting tips, some just things to think about. Uh, cockpit setup, uh, fore aft in the saddle, foot position, kind of briefly go over some of those things. Johnny, I work with Johnny um, in Oakland and in Marin. He is an excellent bike fitter and cycling coach as well with Tempo Endurance Coaching. We are both coaches for the high school mountain bike team in Oakland. Um, everyone knows me. Everyone knows me, that sounded weird. Um, I'm a, I, my name's Dara, PT, Dara Sports PT. Um, so yeah, Johnny and I work a lot together with bike fit. Like we do like a little bike fit PT combo stuff. And so I thought this was a good way to kind of just give people some basic info. Um, and, oh, I see Tom's coming. So what I, what we'll do is I'll let you basically give you the floor. And, um, afterwards I'm going to email everybody the recap of the, the video recap plus a little PDF. Um, and then your info, if people want to ask you more specific bike fitting questions. Uh, take it away. The floor is okay. Yours. Awesome. Awesome. No, thanks. Thanks again for, for having me. Um, yeah, like Dar said, we work together. I think those are some of my favorite fits, honestly, are the ones where we combine and, and, um, you know, you assess and generally some type of a treatment plan or whatever, you know, it's generally somebody that's has some issues that are a little more in depth and, um, you know, you're such a great resource on that. I really appreciate that. Cool. Um, you know, because Dara is so quick. I don't know how many of you on the call have actually been like assessed or actually worked with Dara in person, but she's magical when it comes to looking at somebody <laughs> and being like, well, that's the blah, blah, blah. And she will tell you that little tiny muscle, you know, four, four vertebrae up on the left side that is pulling them to the left. And that's what's screwing them up. And, you know, when you have somebody that is a resource like that working with you, it's so much quicker to get to that place of fitting them and talking to them while she's talking to them about treatment. I'm talking to them about, you know, how can we, um, how can we kind of work around that right now? You know, how can we work around that? And, you know, maybe while Dara's helping him get that calmed down, I'm just kind of getting around that and then kind of setting out a path like, okay. And then as this progresses, we can get to a better place. So, yeah. um, yeah. So anyway, it's awesome. Awesome working with you on that. And, um, cool. Mutual. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, you know, I do a lot of coaching. I do a lot of remote coaching, which is kind of, um, you know, all pretty much all riders across North America. Now I don't really have anybody in Europe or, um, I've coached people all over the place, but the time differences make me crazy. So I kind of like to stay to North America now. But um, one of the things that that's afforded me is I spend a lot of time pulling out issues that are going on with people where I can't see them. And a lot of times it's, you know, how does that, how does that feel? And, you know, that goes 
in coaching, it's a lot of times that's maybe physiological or psychological, but it also gets down to the bike. Right. And they're like, man, you know, my cross bike, it's just not right. You know, like something is just, just not right. I can't, I can't seem to get into that good place with it. Um, you know, whatever it is. And some people that I coach, I mean, you know, maybe there's somebody that's fitting around there. That's really good. And if so, I'll probably tell them you should go see them. And, you know, but if not, you know, um, you know, I really am kind of used to pulling this stuff out and asking people to become more self-aware. And, um, you know, that's, I think really a lot of kind of what I wanted to talk about first is, you know, kind of getting in touch with that. And I, I wanted to talk to you about this too, Darak, maybe you get a little bit of um, input on this, but, you know, one of the things that's been interesting um, is during COVID as we start to do fits again, just as kind of an aside, but not back, is it we, I used to put a lot more people like on the table and I used to do a lot more things where I was really close to them. And now I don't want to do that as much either for their, for their safety, for my safety, just so we both feel better in general. Um, even though, you know, we have a lot of safety stuff when we do have somebody in the fitting studio, um, it just feels better. So something that I talk to riders about is like very simple movement stuff, like you've done in every P class forever, but then you know, how does that make you feel? So assessing them on real basic things, you know, toe touches, um, a really deep squat, um, some small pistol squats with one foot, you know, not going down very far. We don't have to be Instagram worthy on a, uh, on a rock somewhere on a mountain, you know, that's not what we're looking for here. Generally what I'm looking for is some balance and I'm looking to see what's going on with the toes. Right. So, um, you know, there's, there's kind of that going on, um, with that and overhead reaches, you know, and people kind of, they don't think about that much. They don't think too much about what's happening with their upper body on the bike. Um, just as a kind of an aside, um, I think Dara and I both see a lot of people that are kind of twisted to one side. Um, I had a series of criterium crashes about four or five years ago that had me pretty much had me scrunched up for about six months. And it was a lot of therapy just to pull me back to a place. So, you know, talking to people about how does that feel is, is really important. Right. And then and having them guess, well, like just to kind of clarify, like, so you're saying, you know, doing an actual assessment of, you know, what does your overhead squat look like? What is your single leg squat? What is your deep squat? What is your t touching, you know, hands to the floor? Um, and that's, and those are things people can do by themselves. You know, I think sometimes people just don't do it. And then when they do it, they're like, oh man, yeah, I am, I'm really tight. Or like, I can't even do my arms overhead because my back starts to arch. Like those are simple things that I would even suggest people just do on their own, just to give them a baseline. Like, where are you at? Like how, like, if you're having a lot of issues on the bike, like that's one way you can see like where you're limited with yourself. And then the bike, the bike fitting, you know, is the second part of it too. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and I mean, I think, right, if they're doing a deep squat and they're kind of, if they're having a hard time kind of getting around the hip at the bottom of it, if that mm -hmm. kind of makes sense, you know, everybody's hip capsule is a little different, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So kind of figuring out that movement pattern for them mm -hmm. is, is so important. And this is all stuff, again, that people are, should be doing like in a mirror. And it's, I, I agree. I think it's, it's kind of shocking, right? Like sometimes you go, if you had a, you know, a hard ride the day before and you go and do a deep squat in front of a mirror and you're like, wow, you know, why did my foot do that? You know, or why did my ankle, my ankle just felt atrocious doing that, you know, and you can, and it really kind of comes back to that. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, another thing that I've watched you do a lot, Dara is, uh, walk, have people walk away and come back and then kind of look at their stance. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, I think that's, that's really important too. And people are very unaware of that. Like I always totally. stand with, right. With one foot away a little bit and you can see pictures of you put five people together in a line, just standing there, whatever. And you'll see their feet and their, their tibias, <laughs> everything's all over the place. Right. Yeah. And nobody's the same. So really getting an idea of what that, um, of what that is, what that's about with you personally is really important, right? Cause all this stuff that we kind of do off the bike and we just, just kind of checking in like that mm -hmm. is so important 
for then when we put somebody on a bike, because I think a lot of people are rather unaware of their bodies. Yeah. Right? Or like, I get this. I just had somebody last night who had multiple knee surgeries. He's a triathlete elite. Um, and because of the knee surgeries, his foot, one of his feet now turn out. And so then he came to me with an ankle and a calf thing. And so then we kind of had to backpedal a little bit. I'm like, well, yeah, your knee has some issues, you know? So then we started talking about, okay, well, do we need to fit the bike to accommodate for that, that one foot that's turned out? And then it, then it's kind of like, you have to unpack it a little bit. Like that's where a, he should see you, um, B, he should be mindful of the fact that like, he does have some limitations in his knee and we don't necessarily want to make them both just do this. Um, and then work on it. Like, that's my part is like, I'm like, well, you can't just get the bike fit and then just be like later, you know, it's like you do your bike fit, you do your strength and mobility stuff, hopefully a couple times a week or whatever, or PT. Um, and then you might need to get it fit again, you know, as things evolve over time, but just being mindful that, yeah, a lot of people have weird one foot's going this way. One foot's going this way. They have a tighter hip. They have a mild scoliosis. I mean, that's so common, I would say it's unusual to see somebody who has the both feet pointed forward or has doesn't have a knee issue from something or when they're a kid, they broke their ankle. Like, so you just want to be mindful of those things. And then, you know, not just kind of hop on your bike and be like, oh, I don't know, my knee just hurts. And I don't know, it's probably like my fit. And like, well, you know, think, think about it, assess yourself, look at yourself do the things you just suggested, squat, walk, all those things and get it checked out. Um, but yeah, continue. Yeah. I, I think that, um, yeah, be, be, and pulling that stuff out. I mean, that's what a good, a good, in a good bike fit, that's the very first thing people should be hearing in. They hear it from me usually in the questionnaire, honestly, like that I, they get it right when they book. And then I get back to them if I see any stuff like that, but it's funny you know, when you meet somebody in person, you're like, so, you know, like what happened to, you know, did anything happen to your ankle? And they go, well, yeah, I broke it like, you know, 20 yeah. years ago. You and they know, don't even tell you that out of a helicopter or yeah. something. I hear People, crazy it's, stories, right? It's funny how you'll be like, do you have any injuries? No. And then you'll ask them again. That's why I always ask it three times. And then they'll be like, oh yeah. So I shattered my tibia 10 years ago. And then I broke my pelvis. I'm like, what? Like where? didn't I just ask you about your injury? You know, and like, but people forget they're like, I'm fine now. And I'm like, yeah, you're fine. But like, that probably is affecting you somehow. <laughs> like, you know, it's just like, that's, you, you just got to remember, like, those things are still part of your body and it's normal. That's everybody's had those weird, not maybe shattering your pelvis, but, but it matters, you know, it matters in like how you're built and alignment and, and fit. So yeah. So it's, those are always the interesting ones. Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, the, the series of crashes that I had, I mean, maybe that, that helped me not be so that probably started pushing me towards, okay, I don't want to ride six inches away from a gutter with 75 of my closest friends every weekend, you know, like there's maybe a little bit of that there, but it also, um, you know, it's, it's taken me a long time to get back to where my body has pretty good motion. And so there is definitely, you should be thinking about, um, you know, changing that fit and, and checking back in and getting that therapy. And then because the position that I could ride right after that is, you know, I moved back with a lot of mobility work. I moved back to riding a very aggressive position on a road bike and being able to race again effectively. And then, you know, now, like you mentioned, you know, people 10 years later or whatever, you know, the middle of my back, it's still, you know, it still hurts my T3, my T4, they'll hurt the rest of my life in some fashion, right? So it's constantly um, adjusting that. And our bodies are constantly kind of moving back and forth on this number scale. And so, you know, thinking about checking in and just, just getting conscious of that, I think is so important for people, right? Uh, my right foot turns out just a little bit. And I had to, you know, you're speaking about that and just being able to adjust those cleats, adjust that cleat rotation on just that side um, you know, is, is really important. And that's something that, you know, you can usually do at home. I mean, a trained bike fitter will do it faster because they're seeing it. They're thinking about a process or they're going to work through that. Right. They're going to be like, Oh, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, I get behind them and I, I work with them on that, but, um, yeah. So, so what are some common, I know you were going to talk about like, you know, aggressive setup and position wise, like what are some common things that you see either that people do that could be fixed or, suggestions you would have 
for just your setup? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the cleats are, are an easy one to work with, right? Um, for sure, you know, you should feel, um, you know, as you check in with your body. So if you're kind of checking in and starting at the bottom and working up, that's probably the easiest way to, to do that. Mm -hmm. And thinking about having a nice oval of pressure across all the MTP joints, which are the joints kind of back from the toes. I know you know that, but just kind of discussing that. So kind of like the ball of the foot going across all the, all of those, um, we should have a nice oval of pressure there. Right. And if that's not happening, we should ask why. And then, you know, if you're riding flats, it's kind of, it can be kind of interesting, like where the foot ends up, you know, like as opposed to um, like, like in correlation with where the pedal spindle is. Right. So are people riding where they're scooting their foot up a little more on the flats or are they constantly kind of jammed into the front of the shoe like they want to go forward? So as you get more in touch with your like with the sensations that your body is giving you, the body is giving you these sensations all the time. A lot of times it's just figure, like kind of getting in touch with them. Right. So I'll go out for a ride and I'll be like, you know, that cleat, I did that thing, but it's just not right. And then I'll just move it back. And a lot of times you move it a couple millimeters one way or another. Um, and that tends to make it better. Right. So for and a simple one is definitely the spindle. Um, and in the, in the post, I'm going to send you the link to, or that you have that we're going to share with people afterwards. It's definitely right in there. You can see a great picture of a laser going through the center and you can see both the MTP joints and it's really, it, it really is a, an excellent capture of that. So um, that's, that's a great one to think about moving the cleats in and out to kind of accommodate for stance is also really good, right? So you always kind of reverse that. So if you have a wider stance, like, you know, these bikes, you know, they're, they're static things, right? They're just, they're fixed machines. And we're these kind of dynamic creatures and we're like on them and we're moving around and all kinds of things are happening. So, you know, we're not all of our hips are exactly what they, you know, like going straight down are going to be right over those pedals. So thinking about in general, kind of stacking those joints all the way up is so important, right? I think you had a post on that actually yesterday, maybe about posture. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I call, I call it plumb line, but, um, and, and, you know, it was like a picture of a person just standing and it's like, I'm thinking, you know, ears over the shoulders and then shoulders stacking over the pelvis and the pelvis is level. Um, oh, well, let me admit to me. So the, so the pelvis is sitting level, meaning it's not tilted forward. It's not tilted, tilting back and then kneecap. And I can send my PDF to my picture kneecap kind of lining up in general with kind of the second and third toe. Right. So we're thinking like in general, we want to have like nice harmony where things are lining up and there's some, some even plumb line. And, and the posture one I did was really just like when the head is forward, you can see that the ears are not kind of stacking over the shoulders. So a lot of times for, you know, computer work, it's pulling their shoulders back, but that, that also translates to the bike as well. And you're thinking of it like more like the spindle, maybe you can, I don't know if you have your foot model or whatever. Um, but you're saying, looking at, can you kind of explain again, how you're looking at alignment, like what you're looking for when you want things to line up? Yeah. I think when you look down, so when you're riding your bike mm -hmm. and you look down, you should see the kind of the, the, MTP joints in your feet, you should see them over this pedal spindle. So in other okay. words, if you're looking, you can kind of see the inside, you can see the pedal spindle kind of sticking out and on the inside and the outside, you kind of know where it is in a shoe, or even if you're riding flats, you can still see it and kind of look at where that's lining up. Right. And there's, okay. that's kind of a tendency. You're, you're going to put your feet where it feels comfortable typically. Um, and yeah, so on, on that plane, that's kind of where we look at that, right? We look at that from the side and then from the front, the same thing that you're talking about, about stacking it. I'm usually doing that with lasers and, um, and video capture, right? So I'm looking at those lines. I'm running those lines right through those, those joints in people and then seeing if I'm seeing anything out of whack, right? Yeah. Which is generally the knee, right? The knee right. usually pays the price in the whole Right. the whole thing. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's the same thing, you know, like when we're talking about doing your own self-assessment, like if you were in front of a mirror and I always suggest practicing a lot of this stuff just for 
brain, you know, neuromuscular feedback. So if you're doing your squats and preferably in front of a mirror, and then you do your single leg squat, I guarantee you, if you're having issues on the bike, you're going to see a lot of that with either your double or single leg squat, right? So if one knee is diving in close to the top tube, it's probably going to be doing the same thing in your single leg squat, right? Um, so those are good. And when I say diving in, I mean like, you know, it's not the, the knee, the kneecap's not falling in line with kind of second and third toe. It's kind of coming in too much. Um, and, and that's, and that's part of why that's what I'm looking at first while well, I'm watching them walk and I'm watching people this and that, but I mean, you could either get on the trainer and video yourself, have Johnny assess you, um, or look at your single leg squat. I mean, you'd be surprised people, even the elite athletes that I see, and this is elite ultra marathoners and triathletes, da, 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 like when I put them in, have them start doing single leg motions and single leg squat, single leg deadlift, not only is their foot strength very weak, their arches and their knees wobbling, but their hips are very unstable. And it's because they're either sitting on the bike. So the bike is supporting them and they've gotten used to just this one plane of motion um, or they're not cross training. They're not doing other stuff besides just biking. Um, and a lot of these things are fixable things, right? The knee pain and the this and that with stretching ability work, da, 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 da. And sometimes it is bike fitting, like, you know, um, accommodating to one side um, more than the other, but yeah. So yeah, I mean, looking at the plumb line, um, what are some other things that you, you were thinking of, or you like looking at in terms of bike fit? Like, I know we're talking about the front end too, like the cockpit setup. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think, I think probably the feedback that people get with the cockpit length is um, the best one that I work with on them is how much weight is in their hands and how much is on their butt, right? Um, because if you feel like there's a, too much, and you know, I'm looking for 50, 50, 60, 40, okay. I, I typically look for a little more weight on the butt, the more aggressive or more, the more loose terrain we're riding essentially. So the more we're moving towards like mountain bike racing, as opposed to criterium racing, right? So a criterium, a crit racer or a track racer, we're going to have a lot more weight on the hands because we're talking about really quick motions, the little tiny motions, but you have to have an ultra responsive front end of the bike, right? So we're not necessarily fitting as much for comfort there. We're fitting a lot more for, you know, for, for performance. But the more we want to slow that down, the more I want to kind of see that. And I don't like to see a lot of weight on the hands because your hands get numb. It's no fun. Right. right? And a couple things kind of can happen with that is, um, you know, you can kind of see if you see where your hands kind of sit on the hoods. Um, you know, if people, um, if I see a lot of petite riders that are riding too big of bikes for them, right? Like and too long? Too long. Okay. Yeah. Typically too long. I also have too wide of bars, right? Yeah. I kind of, I kind of yeah. go on my rant about let's get you on a 36. Let's get you on a 38. Right. Yeah. I'm <laughs> on 36 bars. And so every bar that I've run on my, and we're, I'm talking about my road bike. So I'm five one. Um, I've gotten so the bike, the bars that came stock were too wide. Um, my cross bike, which was behind me, I run wider bars, but my road bike has much shorter and then on my mountain bike as well, I think that's an issue for women, but even in general, I tend to see that the stock bars are like, you know, you, you get a extra small, you know, Santa Cruz and it's got the same length bar as the medium. And it's like, well, if you're riding an extra small frame on a Santa Cruz mountain bike, you probably don't need whatever the length, like, I don't even know what they're coming stock with. So when people don't think about it, they just get on the bike and go. And a lot of times then you'll get like, pain and soreness and it's like yeah your bars are like way too wide um so yeah so there's there's definitely value in assessing that like do the numbers measure it see you know see if that may be a contributor yeah and i think people can find that in some ways on their own too like just if it's again it's kind of coming back to checking in right like mm -hmm. if if their hands are always back from the hoods like three centimeters, four centimeters, if they're like, you know, um, you know, if I'm reaching out to, I'm like, well, how do you stop the bike? You know, like we'll have these discussions, you know, like, and they're like, well, then I just get out there and get them, you know, it's yeah. like, well, that's cool. But, you know, I would like to see you, let's try and get you as close as you can to where that's fitting. And, and the other thing is, you know, the brake levers, 
um, you know, getting that where it's, you know, kind of right, you can kind of see this. So I like to see the brake lever if this was behind the fingers, like around right here, you know, where they're kind of draped over the brake levers. Mm -hmm. I hate to see it when people are reaching for the brake levers because yeah. that's just all bad. And even with the new hydro brakes that are so, so powerful and you don't really have to give them as much touch as the older brakes did, you know, you still, you want to have everything perfectly ergonomic in the front. So, so people kind of looking at that can make a big difference, you know, um, or adjusting it too. I mean, I think people forget like the levers you can, you know, I have had to move all of mine in cause it's just the reach is too long for my fingers. Yeah. Um, Which is it, different in every single group out there, like in every single maker, every single group, red hydro is different than, you know, than red AXS hydro. It, it drives me crazy. I, yeah. I'm constantly like changing. Um, so do you just need an Allen key, like a little tiny little, like, and flip up the hoods? I mean, I know some of them like can't be, I don't even understand. I don't, don't do can't be, but um, is that, is that fairly easy to adjust? It, it is. Sort of? And it's, it's really find which one you ride and then look at the YouTube of it. Right. And so then do it. Like, look at the YouTube. When in doubt, look at the YouTube. I mean, come on. I fixed I fixed my refrigerator the other day. Looking, there was some YouTube of a guy like crawling into his refrigerator. Yeah. Like, it looked like a spy video. I don't even know how he got the camera yeah. in there. And he was like, look at this tube. And that's what makes the ice back there. And there's YouTube for everything. I look at YouTube all the time, especially on those on those group sets because they're constantly different. Yeah. And it, it used to be, oh, you flip up the hood. It'll be right there. Right, and now right. it's like, oh no, now you adjust the small shifter first on SRAM on the side. It's really well shown, but then you actually have to take that small shifter, pull it back. And then there's another Allen key up inside mm -hmm. of there for the, for the brake. Right. So they're all over the bikes and you're kind of looking. And so, yeah, I typically do a little homework sometimes, but yeah, it's right on YouTube. That's a great one to fix because you, you can't really mess it up. Yeah. You can't hurt yourself doing it. Yeah. And you can be like, oh, I don't like that. That's too small. That's too close. Yeah. And then move them out. And they're getting a lot better. Um, they're kind of preset now into these like four sets. The last, the most modern bikes that I work at, they're usually like kind of preset into like four um, spots. And so you, if you go too far with it, it just clicks back to the far of the setting. So yeah. kind of, it's kind of nice. They've been thinking about a little bit about how to make that better for the consumer. Perfect. Um, one last question and then I can always, we can always open up to questions and we'll probably do another zoom chat also and get into more stuff. So what about like your saddle height position? I know a lot of times I get either low back, upper back, shoulder, neck ache and people, you know, like in this like super aggressive setup, like how, I mean, do you, do you feel like people are always trying to get like two more aggressive setup than they need? Or like, how do you kind of figure out like where you're supposed to be in terms of like saddle height to front end? Yeah. So I think there's, there's two things. One saddle height itself. Um, I usually set that. I, I talk to them. I, I take them up until I start to see rocking in the hips. Um, I have some, you know, some motion, I have a Leomo stuff. So I have, you know, gyroscopes on them and sensors and blah, blah, blah. And if I start to see too much rocking, I take them back down, some things like that. But um, if you're a high school coach, if you're setting people up really fast, this is how I set, I'll tell you how I set my step kids up is um, I have them hold a, a level, like a, like a big building level between their legs, like kind of pull it up wear wearing no shoes and they make it level there's a little bubble in the middle so it's kind of like you can do this without being kind of like inappropriate and then i measure that distance to the ground and then i multiply that by 0.883 which is like an old school greg lamond book from 1970s or something i don't For know calculating eight. saddle height yeah okay and, and i mean for getting kids if you're working with kids on a team something like that. You and they're like, time. yeah, boom, you're right. done. Two minutes. I, my stepson started, Jordy started riding his mom's Ibis the other day and we just set it up. I was like, dude, come here for a minute. Boom, boom, two minutes. And I watched him ride and I was like, that looks perfect. And I'm like, how did that feel? And he's like, it felt great. Like I didn't, you know, cause if you go too high, you'll always have sensations of like too much pressure. Right. So when, right. when I'm fitting people, there's stuff like that. So saddle height real quick. That's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, oh wait, so, John, Tom has a question. 
Are you measuring from 0.883 from the BB spindle or the pedal axle? Um, from the BB spindle. Sorry, <laughs> I had to think about that for a minute. Yeah, from the BB spindle up. Exactly. We can add that in in like the yeah. the show notes. Um, yeah. But what about what? So, so what about the BB yeah. spindle? It's always it's always easier for sure. Okay. Um, and then what about like the front end? Like, how do you, like, is it your, you know, you're too aggressive when everything hurts, like your hands hurt, your neck hurts and your fingers go numb. Like, <laughs> like what, you know, what if you just want to be like, Oh, I want to be super aggressive set up. Well, I think, you know, you were kind of showing the, the, the look in the front of the neck. Right. So I see that. Um, if you start to get any neck pain, if you have a sensation that you're kind of peering out from under your eyes, eyebrows, right. Like mm -hmm. that. Um, if you're looking underneath your, your visor all the time, there's some kinds of setups where that's exactly what you're going for, right. For some time trialing and things like right, that and right. pursuit, especially, but that's outside of what we're talking about here. We're talking about for fitting for, um, for comfort. Um, so I, and the other thing that I find is I see the shoulders rolling out too much, right? Rolling, I see that with reach. Like forward. Yeah. Okay. They're rolling too far forward. So you know, you want to have, um, as far as reach, you want to have about 10 degrees of, of, uh, deflection in the elbow. But I think you also, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a sensation thing, right? If you get on the bike and it's like, oof, that's a little too much. You can, a lot of times this kind of starts, if you, if you do a little bit too much of that and you close down the hip angle, and this is something as you kind of get in touch with doing like your squats and things like that. If you're like, man, you know, getting that deep, like, once the hip angle gets a little too much like this, it closes that down and it's, it's, it'll just mess up everything. Like your knee will start to pop out a lot of things like that. So we want to lessen that angle until it's, until it's right for you. Um, one thing to think about is that most modern road helmets are pretty aerodynamic, actually looking at a kind of level forward kind of thing. Um, and the most aerodynamic, the thing that I most start with, with aerodynamic stuff is I think about the head position, right? So if somebody's really dropped, but then they're kind of picking their heads up like this. Mm -hmm. I see this a lot. If I go to, yeah. if, I, if I'm doing like evaluation at a track, I see a head popping a lot. I can put a Leomo sensor on the back of your helmet and we can show, I'll show you every lap. You're probably picking your head up like this a little tiny bit, right? To peer through a corner. And every mm -hmm. time you do that you know, it's, it's quite a bit of quite a bit more drag, you know, and every time. Or so, next, or neck strain. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. A ton of neck strain. Um, yeah. So that's, some, that are, those are usually some pretty good clues. Okay. You know, you, you hear the neck pain pretty quickly though, right? It kind of reacts and, and we're fitting around again, you mentioned this earlier is, you know, um, everybody is on computers. Everybody is texting all the time. Everybody has this hunched position. They have a little bit of text neck. So, you know, getting that, getting that cervical spine nice and neutral is super important. Yeah. And when you say neutral, just to kind of recap really quickly what, I, what I'm saying, like when the when you're here, right. So there's a, this action of just tucking the chin in a little bit, you're just bringing your head like in line with the rest of your spine so that you're not getting like this curve in the neck. Right. So that's kind of what you're seeing on the bike. And that's, that's really what's happening when people come in to see me and they're like, Oh, I'm on the computer all day. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It's really just kind of like, can we get you back into that plumb line? And that may be more strengthening. It may be more pulling the shoulders back, stretching. It could be your setup is just crappy, you know? Um, so it, it's, it's often a call. I mean, I think that's kind of the concluding thing that I wanted to wrap up with is like, it's, you know, there's never like one quick fix. Um, you know, your bike fit is changes over time. Your body changes over time. Your work changes over time and, and all that stuff. And so it's like, you know, as long as you're kind of checking in with your body and your fit and just managing both, meaning you do some strength and stuff when you're off the bike and then you make sure your bike setup is good. Um, you know, most people can do okay. Even, even if they've got some issues or prior injuries, cause we all do, we all do. So um, well, none of us are yeah. perfectly symmetrical. Um, any, any last little thoughts you have, you want to, no, uh, you know, that the same that? stuff that worked 20 years ago with riding with a mirror in your garage on some rollers 
is that it still works today, right? So you don't, you know, to, to get some awareness or even if you go, wow, you know, I have these issues and then you come see us for to fix those issues or you're like, I can't quite figure this out or whatever, just to be aware of that, whether, um, you know, in a mirror, today's cameras on phones are amazing. Um, do that, get that awareness, and then you'll come in like a much more informed person and we'll get through it like this, you know, yeah. we'll get right to what's bugging you. And then we'll spend the time, spend your time working on what's important. Yeah. And just, just a quick plug for my, my on like, so the same thing is what I do in my online boot camps is people just video themselves because there's so much information that I get when somebody videos themselves with their phone, doing their squats or their deadlifts, like you think you're doing it right. Like, yeah, I guarantee you, I can find 20 things that need to be fixed. Um, but it's not just for me to correct people. It's cause like, I want people to see what they're doing um, and just have a better body awareness of what your squat and your deadlift is going to really reflect in your bike position, right? So if that looks crappy, you're, I wouldn't be surprised if you're not being efficient on the bike or if you're, you're wasting watts potentially. So, so there's value in, in videoing yourself. Even if you don't do, you know, my boot camp or do a bike fit with Johnny, I think mirror looking at yourself, getting some feedback, doing some of those assessments and we'll link, I'll email everybody out the, uh, kind of a recap of what we talked about. So, um, yeah, I think that's good stuff. Um, I have a couple of bike fit things I need you to look at now that we're talking about this. So, yeah, um, well, you know where to find me. Yes, I do. Yeah. So Johnny's in Marin, uh, as well as Montclair. Um, yeah, I do. I want you to look at my mountain bike set up. So we'll have to talk later, but, um, yeah, thank you. If anybody, if you guys have any, cause we're running out of time. Um, if you have any questions, um, email me and, uh, we'll add the answers into the recap. I think we'll do that instead. I think that'll be easier. Um, and then we'll do another chat. And if there's anything else that we're missing that you want covered, I'll, we'll have Johnny come back um, and she can do some more. So, yeah. 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 And I'm happy to, you know, shoot me an email. Um, you know, I'm not hard to find um, John at Tempo Endurance Coaching and, um, you know, ask away. I'm yeah. happy to, I'm happy to chat with you about that. And, um, you know, we'll get you, we'll get you sorted out. Cool deal. Awesome. Well, uh, I will add your email to the um, recap. So awesome. thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, and thank you guys. I'll email you all. If you have more questions, let me know. Have a great weekend. Woo woo. And uh, we'll do another chat soon. All right. Awesome. Bye. See all. You thank See you. Ya. See you guys. Bye. Bye.